but it's okay. I mean, you did good. Yeah. I'm gonna show you a list or something. Yeah, I just, yeah. I just don't You don't know. I know. You got skills. You can make it work. Good morning, guys. God bless you all. Um, today we're gonna, right now we're gonna do our canopy of protection, Psalms 91. I um, if everybody wanted to fall. He that dwelt in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noiseless pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. But, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They, they shall bear thee up in thy hands, lest I dash thy, thy foot against, against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shall trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will, I will be with, be with him, him in trouble. trouble. I, I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a hand praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You may be seated. <clears throat> we just have a few announcements, and then we're going to do our confession of faith. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, we want you to be mindful. We want to remind you that on Tuesday nights, we have Celebrate Recovery, amen? <coughs> Elder Claude teaches Celebrate Recovery, and I'm telling you, it is a blessing to your life, amen? If you just want to be encouraged in where you are and what you're doing, even in where you've been, amen? Celebrate Recovery is an awesome class and an awesome teaching for you to come to. Hallelujah. We have a great time. Also, Wednesday night Bible study, we want you to prepare uh, to be online Wednesday night Bible study. Does everybody have the link for Wednesday night Bible study? Does everybody see the links for Wednesday night Bible study? I'm going to send y'all the link. I'm going to look for everybody's face on Wednesday night Bible study because I'm telling you, you're missing it. God is so good. Amen. So Wednesday night Bible study, um, we are still online. You don't even have to show your face if you don't want to, you know, but we have some people to show their face and cooking dinner and all kind of stuff. But we want you to uh, be online because the word of God says that iron sharpeneth iron. <clears throat> and we need to reason the word of God together. Amen. All right. And uh, remind you of Friday night prayer. The prayer line is open on Friday night to everyone. Anyone, if you have prayer requests, if you are in need of prayer, we want you to come onto the prayer line and be a blessing and get blessed. Amen. Hallelujah. Also, we want to be mindful. Um, we have a lot going on this summer. We are preparing for our uh, vacation Bible school for our children. It will be in July, and it will be uh, the 18th, 19th, 20th, and 21st, something like that, those last three days in that third week. Uh, but you'll be getting flyers, and our kids are going to be going on trips, and we're going to do activities with them this year, amen? And so if you would like to be a part, you'd like to chaperone, you would like to help with our vacation Bible school for our kids, Please let us know, amen? Let someone know so that we can get you in and put you in place so that our kids can be blessed this summer. 
Also, we are going to do a back to school outreach. Our back to school outreach is gonna be called our back to school Sunday. We are gonna probably do about 100 uh, backpacks, get them all stuffed, and the people are invited to come to service and they will pick up their backpacks and all of that stuff. We're gonna have a little celebration for our back to school, amen? Uh, some kids start back to school at the end of July and some, people, some started in August. So we are going to do it right at the, uh, the end of August. Pastor Ron, did we say the end of August? The end of uh, July will be our back to school outreach. So we want you guys to be prepared for that. We're going to have uh, something out here in the hallway. If you can pick up some extra pencils or some pens or some notebooks or whatever so we can get all these backpacks stuff and that we can be ready. We want to make sure that our kids are going to be blessed for our back to school Sunday. Amen. Also included in these backpacks will be a list of things for parents to pray over their children. Every backpack is going to be, we're going to equip them with the scripture and a verse to pray over your children for this time that we live in. We have to do it. Amen. And so we want to make sure that everybody's included. If you would like to help pack backpacks or pull things together, we want you to be a part of that. Amen. So that will, that option will be out there. Um, am I missing anything? Pastor Ron, am I missing anything? Oh, movie night. Has anybody decided that they wanted to be a host family for <clears throat> next Friday? Next Friday, we have the movie, um, The Jesus Revolution. And we wanted you to invite your friends and your families or your neighbors to your home and share this movie with them. If you are not going to be a host family and you would like to come and see the movie, then let me know and I will let you know uh, what the host families are so far. I will be one of the host families, so if you want to come and watch the movie and hang out, uh, you will be able to do that there. But I believe that there's uh, somebody else that's going to be a host family also. So if you want to participate in that, I don't know, how many of you have seen that movie? It is an awesome movie, is it not? <clears throat> it's amazing. I mean, it, it will just make things so clear to you where you are today, amen, and how we work, worship and seek the Lord today. You know, God's word is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. It doesn't change. We change, amen? And so that is a, a movie that we are going to watch the Friday before Father's Day, before our Father's Day celebration on Sunday, amen? Okay, I believe that is all the announcements that we have at this moment. Let's prepare our hearts and our minds um, for our confession of faith, Lord. And while you're doing that, you know that you can give at any time. Those of you that are online, it is on the screens. It is um, out there in several different ways. And you can come and give your offering at any time in the service. So let's prepare our hearts and our minds for our confession of faith. Because we are believing God for some things. Amen? Hallelujah. Let me go to that it is. Good morning, church. Good morning. All right, let's get it going. I'm going to help him out. There you go. Okay, here we go. People are standing, standing in, in line, line to get, get to into the heart, heart for the world, world Christian Center, Christian Center to, to hear the, the word of God. God. Every seat is filled in every service, Sunday morning worship, Wednesday night Bible study, and any other service that we might have with, with the, the expectations, expectations of signs, wonders, and miracles. Every need in this ministry is met, and we are 100% Tide Giver Center. We own our own worship center, which houses men's, women's, youth, children's, outreach evangelism, missions, counseling, and media ministries, and there is still room for God to grow us. Our families are blessed, our marriages are healthy and prosperous. All of our property is paid off in full, and we owe nothing to no man. Every member of this ministry's soul is prospering in the word of God and is therefore healthy, wealthy, and wise. And we are reaching the world with the gospel through our prayers and support. For this is a prosperous year for us, and the, and the doors, doors of success have been opened. We shall succeed in everything in Christ. Christ. The, the doors, doors of failure, failure have been closed, and we shall know no defeat. defeat. For, For this is a prosperous year for us, and the doors of success have been opened. 
We, we shall, shall succeed, succeed in, in everything in Christ. Christ. The doors of failure have been closed, and we shall know no defeat. For this is a prosperous year for us, and the doors of success have been opened. We shall succeed in everything in Christ. The doors of failure have been closed, and we shall know no defeat. And being fully persuaded that what he has promised, he is able to perform. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give him a praise. He's worthy, worthy to be praised. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you all the honor, the glory, and the praise. We thank you, Lord, for who you are today and what you're doing in every dimension of our lives. And now we'll release our children to Children's Church. Hallelujah. Our God is an awesome God. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Go with me this morning to the book of Acts, the first chapter. We've been in this series, This Is That. And since we're in this series, this is that. This is that really comes from the day of Pentecost. When Peter stood up and began to prophesy. And as those thought that they were drunk, Peter said, no, they're not drunk as you suppose. He says, this is that. So go with me once again to 12. I mean, first, the book Acts, the first chapter, 12th verse. Then returned they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem a Sabbath day journey. And when they were come, they went up into the upper room where they abode both Peter, James, and John, and Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, and Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas, the brother of James. These all continued with one accord and in prayer, supplication, with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. Hallelujah. So I just ask God to bless you today. You may be seated. I ask God to pour out his spirit upon us today. Today is part three in our series. This is that power, power from on high. We live in a time where many people are concerned about us running out of power. They're concerned because of the fossil fuel issue. Could we ever run out of fossil fuel or could we ever run out of oil, in other words? So many countries are fighting because of this thing called oil. They're they're, they're trying to make sure that they have enough in reserve in case somebody decides to turn off your oil. That was the problem when the Ukraine war broke out, that many places in Europe were were, were held hostage or feeling like they were caught in a bad spot. Why? Because they were getting their oil from Russia. Well, I tell you today, you know, that's, that concern for us is still real and very alive. So much so that, that many people are trying to tell us that we need to look to the sun to get our power. And so they want you to get solar power. They want you to look to the S-U-N. But I'm here to tell you that if we're going to get the real power, if you will, as a church, we need to look to the S-O-N. And we need to understand that the power that comes from on high, God has for us. Amen? See, see, we need to know. We need to shift this dynamic. And we need to understand that there's a 
human responsibility to us tapping into the very power of God. God is good, and God wants us to tap into his power. God wants us to stand up straight and to magnify him in all things. Amen? You see, this is the finest hour of the church, but however, however, it, it, this will be the finest hour of the church, but the church at its best was the church at its birth. Why? Because there was no restraint upon the church. Those that were sold out were sold out. They gave everything they had to give to Christ. They gave their life. They didn't hold anything back. They loved the Lord and they served him with all they had. And I want to encourage you today that you begin to walk. See, how many of you sometimes feel like powerless? You're powerless because of whatever situation that you're dealing with. You're powerless uh, uh, because of the, what the government may be saying, or you feel powerless because of other things that are going on. I need you to understand that this is a day that it's time for us, the church, to arise and to give the Lord glory. Amen. You see that that Pentecostal, that, that, that experience that they experienced on the day of Pentecost came with a human responsibility, and they needed the Spirit's outpouring for God's power. Huh? They needed God's, the Spirit to give an outpouring for God's power to do what? God's work. To make themselves, and this is the deal, they, they had to do what? In order to tap into the power, they had to do something. They had to make themselves available. Available to God's will. See, because there's some people who are available, but they're only available when it lines up with their will. It's not about their will, but it's about being available when God says. And sometimes, guess what? We have something, and we want to give or do this or that, but God said, I want you to do this, or I want you to give that. Have you ever experienced when you wanted to do one thing and God said something different? And if that was the case, what did you do? See, God wants to bring us to that place that we're willing to submit ourselves. So I want to challenge you today. I want to challenge you to be fat. Now, now I understand that that's contrary to everything that we like and believe. Amen. You know, we are, you know, how, how, how many of you are fighting the battle of the bulge? Amen. Some of us is fighting the battle that says we need some bulge. Amen. You need some more bricks in your pocket. But too many of us, if you will, have not been fat, the fat of the Lord. Or we've not been fat enough. And fat stands for faithful, available, and teachable. But if you get to the place that you're going to be faithful in the Lord, you're going to be faithful to seek him. You're going to be faithful to listen to his voice. And you're going to understand that obedience is better than sacrifice. That you're going to step out and give God glory. Let me tell you something, church. The church today needs to be like the church of old. The method has changed, but the message is the same. You see, they didn't have social media. They didn't have live streaming, amen? But we do. But guess what? They had power. Power of the Holy Ghost. See, just because you can plug up your phone and get a little juice, that's not the power that God wants you to have. And how many of you walk around and you're powerless? You can't pay off a headache. We got to get to the place that we have the power of God surging through us. Letting God have his way. But it begins with you making up your mind that you're going to be what? Faithful to God. Because guess what? We know one thing. He is faithful. He has never failed. He has never, ever lost a battle. When Christ hung on the cross, that was a day, a moment that changed everything. Matter of fact, it looked like the devil had won. It looked like the devil had struck the one blow that seemed to be so devastating to the church before the church could be born. 
Matter of fact, that's, that's his MO. His MO is let me kill you. Let me stop you before you get started. Let me get you before you get on your feet. That's why when, when, when Moses was born, if you will, they, they decided that they were going to kill all the children while trying to kill Moses, trying to kill the deliverer. Because they knew that there was a promise. They knew that there was a plan. And then, of course, we understand the same thing occurred at the birth of Christ. They tried to kill every child two years and younger just in case we miss. We want to get a wide birth. We're going to take all of them out. Every male child. Hear me something, men. You're a target. In both of those instances, you're a target. Because if a man really begins to submit himself to God, if a man gets out of his emotions and he submits himself to God, then he becomes an anchor for his family. He becomes a force, if you will, to be reckoned with. But if you're unstable, then guess what? Your house is unstable. Oh, but don't, don't, don't think I'm, 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 I'm just wrong. Ladies, guess what? Especially if you don't have a man. Because not every woman has a man. And if you don't have a man, don't feel like you're lacking because Christ covers you. And if you will submit to the Lord, if you submit to the things that God has given you, then you can walk and you can set a foundation for your family and for your household. You can raise them up to love the Lord and to serve the Lord. But the truth be told, so many women find themselves in a position because a man got out of place, because a man didn't do what he was supposed to do. When we men get out of place, it makes the women in our lives become displaced. And when they get displaced, and the only way they get back into place is to get connected to the Lord and decide that they're going to pursue God no matter what you do. As a man, if I turn left and God is saying turn right, everybody else ought to be going right. But too many times, the man may turn left and everybody else goes in every other different direction. Is God talking to anybody today? I'm here to tell you that, 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 that if you're, say, I'm alone. If you're alone, you have to have the revelation that makes the difference. And I want you to take that aloneness and say, I'm all one with God. See, see, you can be alone. But if you're alone, just make sure you're alone with God. And in your aloneness with God, God is the one who can begin to speak and to pour into you and to give you a revelation that's going to help you stand. I need somebody to understand that God wants you to understand that if, no matter what you don't have in this world, he is the one that is a way maker. He is the one that says no matter what the world says, I will turn your world around and I will place your feet on solid ground and I will cause you to move forward in him. Can somebody shout hallelujah? God is moving, church. This is the finest hour. Will you be faithful to the Lord? And then will you be available, available to do his will? Will you be available to say, God, when you call me, I'll be there? That's what Michael Jackson said. He said, all you got to do is call my name and I'll be there. Huh? See, God, God calls your name all the time. Do you respond? But let me ask you this. Do you call his name? Only do you call, you know, you know how it is. 
See, sometimes, sometimes somebody only want to call your name when they want something. Hi there. How you doing? Can I call your name? Pastor Pam. See, I need y'all to understand. I'm talking to my wife. But let me ask you. You see, in the world, sometimes we get so responsive that we, we respond to every Tom and Dick and Harry that call our name. And that don't have to be sexual or perverted or anything like that. But oftentimes you're responding to them more than you're responding to the Lord. Okay, I know there ain't none of you in here. You've, none of you have ever had that experience. But the reality is, is that we have to understand that when we call God's name, He's faithful. He is not a vending machine. He doesn't do everything you want. He does what is according to his will, but he will protect you. If you stay up, uh, up underneath the saddle, the, the abiding saddle, he'll keep you covered and protected. Have you ever, and you knew you did, got from underneath the shadow? And when you got up from up underneath the shadow, you couldn't say, why did I get hit? Why did I get slapped upside my head? Because you moved. You got out from underneath the shadow. And sometimes the, the hit that came didn't come from the world, but it came from God saying, I'm going to chastise. I'm going to smack that backside. Okay, okay, let me say it this way. Anybody in here ever got a whooping for the Lord, from the Lord? I'm telling you, I, I done had a whooping from the Lord. Man, there ain't nothing like it. Yeah, it hurts on the inside, but let me say this. God chastises those whom he loves. So if you're doing wrong, you don't want God to just say, go ahead. You want him to chastise you because it's a sign of his love. You want him to pull your chain. You want him to, to, to say, slow down, you're running in the wrong direction. Let me say this. Mothers, you love your children, right? And you, you correct them because you want the best for them. Is that not right? That's the same thing that God does. He wants the best for us. And so he, he, he does what he can to correct us. But he says, okay, it is your choice now. If you want to have a hard head, okay, okay, a hard head makes a... At least that's what I was told. Or maybe I should say it this way. At least that's what I experienced. When my head was hard, my behind was soft. Anybody up in here experience something like that? And it wasn't because I wasn't loved. But it was because I was loved. But this world has a way of dealing with us. This, this thing called our flesh has a way of dealing with us. It makes us feel that, that, that we don't want to be chastised. We don't want to be corrected because you're in your flesh. You're in your own stuff and you don't realize that you're in your way. You're fighting against what's right. You're fighting against what's good. God loves you and he wants to bless you. But part of the blessing is, is that you got a rod and a staff. The rod is to correct, the staff is to guide. What will you do? Will you let God be God in your life? Are you available? Some people run around and say, I know God got something for me to do. And then God sends somebody to say, this is what I want you to do. And you say, I don't want to do that. 
but you're available. Not for that. We sometimes say, I only want to be available for what I want to be available when I want to be available. And if that's the case, are you really a... Uh... Because if you're available to the Lord, he picks the time. He picks the place. He picks the assignment. You know, God is shifting some things. And you know what? I'm letting God have his way. I'm letting God change my rhythm. You want to tell me, uh, lock up in the office? I'll lock up in the office. And I'll study and pray. You want to tell me to go get in the closet? I'll go get in the closet. And I'll study and pray. I go off and I do different things. And God says, okay, now it's time to pray. I'm going to pray. Because I have to hear from God. I have to be available to be able to pour into you, the church. Why? Because I'm responsible. I'm, I, I, God has charged me to be faithful, available. And not only that, that I can never get to the place that I feel like I've arrived. Because sometimes this thing called the flesh wants you to act like you have arrived. Sometimes this flesh wants you to say I'm three times seven. But I've seen it happen in seven-year-olds. I've seen it happen in nine-year-olds. I've seen it happen in 14. And God forbid, you know it happens in 18-year-olds when they think they know more than they do. They trying to run the show and they can't see down the street. God sees down the street and around the corner. But God loves us that much that he wants us to be faithful. He wants us to be available and then he wants us to be teachable. Because if we're teachable, then we're fat. We're faithful, we're available, and we're teachable. But if you're teachable and you really let the Lord teach you, then you will let him teach you, train you, because if you let him teach you, teaching you is giving you the instruction, training you is allowing you to walk through it and to practice it. Then you get to a place that you get another T, and it's called trusted. Can God trust you? Our money says, in God, we trust. That wasn't the first motto, mot motto that they put on the money or that they were trying to. They came up with one that said, can God trust us? <laughs> Some of us, you know, but then they said, no, we can't put that on the money. You can't, you know, no, no. We don't want to put that in the money, but some of us need that stamp on our forehead. Can God trust us? But the revelation is we need to have on our, 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 our stamped on our head, in God, I trust. Or in God, we trust me, myself, and I. Hello? Let me say this. Get fat in the Lord, and he's about to shift some things in your life. I don't care what the world sees, shows you. I don't care what you see. You're not to walk by sight, but you're to walk by faith. Walk by faith, not by sight. But too many of us are controlled by what we see. You're controlled by what you hear. Hear this now, hear this. Because too many people are tuning into the wrong thing and they're hearing the wrong thing, but they take it as truth. They don't bother to seek the truth. They don't bother to really seek God and to hear what God is saying about the matter. See, guess what? The world does all this stuff to distract you, to keep you discombobulated, to keep you in a place of fear. But we have to stay locked in on what God is saying so that when trouble comes and trouble will come, that you will be, that you will be able to stand in the midst of the tribulation. You can stand 
stand in the midst of whatever's going on. And you can only do that if you're tapped into the power of God. See, our scripture text helps us to understand that they were gathered together, if you will, in the upper room. And there was 120 of them gathered together. And they were praying, if you will, and they were supplicating. Supplication, they were trying to hear what God wants for this people, for this time, and for this place. Y'all need to spend some time trying to hear what God wants for your life. And trust God. And not just say, I'm going to take time to listen to God on the big things. God gave me an ob object lesson this morning. I was driving. We was, we was running late for church. Didn't get a chance to get the boys any McDonald's or cook, cook breakfast. So we said, we're going to ride through McDonald's. I'm pulling in. I hear the Lord say, go to the right lane. There's a car in the left lane, car in the right lane. And all of a sudden, the car in the left lane moves. And I think, oh, I'll I, I, I speed up. I'll get in the, in the left lane. God said, you should have listened. The right lane moved faster. And I still had to wait. God said, I told you to listen. He says, I want you to hear. I want you to listen. So not just in the big things, because sometimes we think, I don't need to acknowledge God in all that, in those little things. But the Bible says, in all thy ways, so how many of you have just, just take this, the big things to God? Sometimes they just, we just take the big things to God, but we don't take them to him right away. We, go, we take them to everybody else and everything else first. When there's no other help, we say, Lord, can you help me? And he said, I was here trying to help you in the beginning. And if you would have allowed me to help you or to speak into your situation in the beginning, I would have saved you some time. He said, look, you know, now it's going to cost you more money. How many of you, how many of you didn't do, the, you know, you didn't do the planning or you didn't do it right the first time. And so now it costs you more money. It costs you more money and it costs you more time. I need you to understand that God is shifting our dynamic. We have to be a people that are that are that are, that are got a made up mind that I'm going to follow Jesus, that I'm going to do what God said. You see, they were on one accord. They were praying. They were seeking the very, very face of God. We need to understand that God is on the move. Amen. Go with me real quick to Luke, the 11th chapter. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody said, preach, preacher. Hallelujah. Yay, double saw. See, I can only do that because I know God is preaching. I can only do that because I know God is on the throne. Luke, the 11th chapter, 5th verse. And he said unto them, which of you shall have a friend and shall go unto him at midnight? And say unto him, friend, lend me three loaves. I see, I know you've got some of you got some friends that you run to. He said, friend, lend me some loaves, three loaves. That's what he said. For a friend of mine is in his journey. And has come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, trouble me not. How many of you got friends like that? The moment you're in need, they say, you better get up away from here. He said, don't bother me. And he goes on to tell you, the door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot. Rise and give thee. How many of you got friends like that? The moment you in need, you called on on them, you know, they needed something and you was there breaking the bread off for them, right? They need something? No, I'm asleep. Ghost! Outie! 
5,000? Because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity, he will arise and give him as much as he needs. The question is, what does importunity mean? See, you got to understand that he, he, he asked his friend, and his friend said, no, man, I'm in bed. Don't bother me. My kids are asleep. You better keep on and get you some gone. But it said because of the importunity, it meant that he kept on. It meant that no matter what, somebody go answer this door. No matter what, I'm going to persist. I'm going to keep on. I'm going to keep asking. I'm telling if you want some sleep, you better choose to rise because it's going to take you a whole lot longer before you can go to sleep because I'm going to keep on. Some of us give up way too soon. It's not that they can't, but they won't. Y'all got to hear what the Lord is saying. And let the Lord have his way. And I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him because he is his friend. He's not going to do it because he's your friend. He will arise and give him as much as he needs because of the importunity. And I will say unto you, ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Some of you have given up way too long. And God says, don't give up. Some of you are just expecting because you have a friend, and they know you got a need. You expect them to just show up and say, here you go. Very few, uh, very, very few would do that. But others, others, if you just determine that I'm not going to give up, hear me, because there are great things that God has for us in life. And many times we hear the prophecy, God speaks and says, God's going to do this and that and the other. And you want to just put it all on God. And God says, look, I'm going to open the door, but you got to walk through the door. I'm going to put it over there, you, but you got to be willing to walk over there and pick up the blessing. Some of us, we, we bother because we're sitting there, we see the door open, and we've not walked through the door, and we're sitting back, and we have not walked through the door, we have not picked it up. We expected them to pick it up or for it to levitate to us, and then you're bothered. You're mad because you didn't get the blessing that God had for you. But I'm here to tell you, knock. Ask. Knock. Seek. Keep on knocking. Keep on asking. Keep on seeking. Come on, tell the truth and shame the devil. How many of you are mad because you didn't get the blessing that God said? You saw it. Matter of fact, you watched it so long. You saw somebody else get in there, open the door, put the key in the ignition, turn it off, beep, beep, as they drove off in your. But I'm here to tell you, make up your mind that today will be the last day that you won't walk in the fullness of what God has for you. Yeah, I'm telling you, yeah, God's got a blessing for you, and you got to tap into the power. You got to be fat to get into the power, okay? Will you let God have his way in your life? Make up your mind. You know what? You know what? Many times in life I use as a motivating factor when I had the ability to do some things, but I allowed myself to be distracted and I fell short. And I say, God, I'm not going to fall short like I did then because I recognize that I didn't put forth my very best. Everybody else could have thought, oh, you put forth all, you know, your best. No, I didn't. 
I had a little bit more to give. I could have stepped up just a little bit more. You ever play sports? When you were playing sports, did you get to practice on time? Did you practice hard? And you think, I did it all. Well, you know, sometimes we need to get to practice early. And sometimes we need to be the last one to leave. Sometimes you got to recognize when others are sleeping, you're putting some work in. Y'all hear me today? But because of the importunity, he will rise and give him as much as he needs. Verse 9, and he says, I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and him that knocketh, it shall be opened. And if a son shall ask bread of any of you, that is his father, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? Keep on asking. Keep on moving. Keep on going. Stop having the attitude of being a failure or being a victim. Yeah, you go through some tough stuff. Yeah, you go through some tough moments. But guess what? God is there to help you get past those moments. It's time for us, the church, to arise. In Isaiah 40, verse 29, it says, He that giveth power to the faint, to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall be utterly, shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. When you wait on the Lord, when you put God, not on your time, but you say, God, I'm going to be on your time. When you wait like a servant, you put a towel on your arm and say, God, I'm beckoning at your every command. God, whatever you say, I'm available to you. However long you say, I'm going to wait on you. I'm going to do what it takes to be right where you want me to be. One time, I, I, as a t young teenager, I was having trouble with someone in my life. And my uncle gave me some good advice. He said, kill him with kindness. Man, that was a wonderful, wise instruction and advice. But the problem was, I wasn't able. No, I couldn't say I wasn't able. Wasn't that I was not able. But I was only available for a short period of time. I was only available until it got uncomfortable or until it got, got me out of the rhythm of what I wanted. If I could have stayed to the course, because sometimes they, yeah, I'm going to wait you out. Oh, yeah, you want something, and I'm going to wait you out. How bad do you want it? And I wasn't wanting stuff. I just needed a transformation in my life. But how many of you aren't willing to wait? You're not willing to wait on the Lord. You're saying, come on, God. It's like me Sunday morning. Hey, y'all, uh, it's, nine, it's, it's 9 o'clock. It's 9 or 10. 9 20, y'all. We, we, we should have been there by now. Come on, let's get in the car, y'all. Y'all laughing. Are you willing to wait on the Lord? And if you're going to wait on the Lord, that means that you're not murmuring and complaining. God, how long? God, I've been waiting five minutes. It's been five days. 
The children of Israel had to wait 40 years because they had some folks that, you know, they, they wouldn't wait 11 days. And so they ended up having to wait 40 years till them jokers passed away. Because they could not enter into the promise and the blessing. Sometimes we're trying to hold on and to give CPR to people in situations in our life that God says, let it go. And wait on me. And if you'll wait on me, I will expedite the time. But if you won't, I will have to let everything else die before you can walk in the next, next season. Somebody getting something this morning? So I want you to be persistent. Persistent in the prayer. I want you to be faithful. I want you to be available. I want you to be teachable so he can train you and he can trust you. I want you not to faint, but to wait on the Lord. Waiting on the Lord. Wait on the Lord is putting your trust in him. Trust in every dimension of God. Trust that he will give you grace. And the grace is the ability, not just favor, but the ability to get the job done. As a young kid, if I could have just known that God gave me the grace, I was trying to do it in my strength. And because my strength was limited, I could only go so far. But if I would just trust the Lord, I could have gone all the way. That lesson wasn't completely learned then. But some 40 or 50 years later, I had the opportunity to do it all over again. And this time, I didn't tap into my own strength. This time, I said, God, I'm going to wait on you. God, I'm going to walk the way you want me to walk. I'm going to serve the way you want me to serve. Because it's not about me. Psalm 25, verse 3. Yea, let none that wait on thee be ashamed. Let them be ashamed which transgresses without cause. He said, none that wait on him, let them not be ashamed. But those that decide they're going to do it their own way, their own time, their own thing, let them be ashamed. Have you ever known the Lord just say, wait, and then you couldn't wait, and all of a sudden, you got a whole, you, you know, instead of playing catch up, because that's what you thought, I'm going to have to catch up, you now got to play clean up. Because you messed up. Now, which is, what is more expensive, catch up or clean up? Because if you're cleaning up, you still got to catch up. But if you're trusting the Lord, he can redeem the time. He can collapse the time. Instead of coming out back here, it may seem like it took you a long way around the road, but when you get there, you're ahead of everybody. Yea, let none of them that wait on thee be ashamed. Let them be ashamed that transgress without cause. Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Lead me into your truth and teach me. For thou art the God of my salvation. Hmm? He's the God of my salvation. If it's going to be in 2023, it's up to me. Lord, teach me your ways. Teach me, God, so that I can pursue, I can do what you've called me to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me give this to you in the God's Word translation. It says, no one who waits for you will ever be put to shame. But all who are unfaithful, ooh, that means they're not fat because they don't even have an F. All who are unfaithful will be put to shame. Make your ways known to me, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth. Teach me because you are God of my salvation. I will wait all day long. Are you willing to let the Lord have his way in your life? 
Are you willing to say, yes, Lord? Can I give it to you in the New Living Translation? Say, I just want, I want, I, I want to get in the truck and drive it home. Is that all right? No one who trusts in you will ever be disgraced. But disgrace comes to those who try to deceive others. Show me the right path, oh Lord. Point out the road for me to follow. Lead me by your truth. Teach me. For you are the God who saves me. For you are the God who saves me all day long. I put my hope in you. I even got to the place that I can't put the hope, my hope in me. Because I know if I leave it to me, I can mess up. What if I put my hope in the Lord? Boy, my heart was troubled about a situation. And I just began to just, I was just going in on prayer and just, just letting the Lord deal with me and deal with the situation. And, and before I got finished praying, the phone was ringing. I was like, God, thank you. <laughs> Because I, I decided that I had no hope but in the Lord. I couldn't do anything about it but be in the Lord. And so I just decided I'm going to draw close to the Lord. I'm going to seek the Lord and let the Lord speak to my heart. See, 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 whenever I get off kilter and I want to get into myself, I miss it. But I say, God, I'm not going to miss it. I'm going to get into your presence. Sometimes that means I got to battle my flesh. Sometimes I've got to battle my mind. Sometimes I've got to battle the inner me's. Well, I know you ain't none of y'all got those inner me's that you got to battle because we're too busy battling the inner me. But the inner me sometimes is the inner me's. Hmm? Somebody ought to be hearing me today. Hallelujah. Listen to this. Psalms 27. Let's just jump over two chapters. Thank you, Jesus. I had fainted unless I believed to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Guess what? You don't have to wait until you die to get the goodness of God. He said the goodness of God in the land of the living. God wants to bless you right now. Let God have his way. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. See, there are times that we will be severely tried that can cause us despair, but nothing can bring us to the place of despair, defeat, or, or, or longing, if you will. If we keep our eyes on the Lord, we must draw close to God and keep on moving, trusting that God is going to bring us through. We must keep our eyes in faith, trusting that he is our hope. He is our way maker. We must let God have his way. We must draw close to him in this hour, church. Let the Lord have his way, church. Let the Lord minister to your soul, church. God is trying to get you to a place, but you got to get up off your rusty, dusty. Maybe you just need to bend them old stiff knees and get on your knees and begin to call upon the name of God. Oh, don't just think that you can only pray when you're on your knees because sometimes you can pray. You're sitting on the toilet, begin to call upon the name of God. Sometimes you're just walking. You don't know what to do. God, I just need you. God, I need of you to speak to my heart. Give me direction. This is that. You need to get to the place that you allow the Holy Spirit to take control. You need to understand that, 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 that we need to allow the Holy Spirit to come on us and to baptize us with the evidence of speaking in tongues so that we can begin to walk in the newness. That our ears are inclined to the King and that we can let God be glorified in all things. 
Can we let God have his way? Let the Lord have his way. Let him shift the dynamics in your life. I don't know about you, but I need Jesus to move on my behalf. And you know what? Man, I had to look and say some of the stuff that I went through, I went through because of me. Not the enemy. God told you not to do it. God told you to shut up. God told you to sit down and be quiet, but you had to keep running your mouth. Or as, or as, or as my dad would say, you, had, you, you put your hand on, you know, how many of you have put your hand on your hip? And did you understand that when you put your hand on the hip, many times it's like a button. You be pushing your hip and at the same time doing this. Huh? Come on now, I know some, some of you ladies have done that. Huh? You get to pushing that button and that head get to wagging at the same time. Huh? And more times than not, when that was taking place, you weren't in the spirit. Lord was saying, shut it down. And you just feeling like, I got, to, I got to express myself. I got to tell, I got to give you a piece of my mind. And I'm saying, listen to the voice of God. Let God have his way. And so I challenge you, if you're online and you don't know the Lord as your Savior, first of all, avail yourself to him. Say you want to be fat in the Lord. You're going to be faithful, available. You can't be available if you're unsaved. You can be used. So if you don't know him as your Lord and Savior today, you got to give your life to him. If you're here, you don't know him as your Savior today, you need to give your life to him. You need to make up your mind that I will be fat. I will be faithful, available. I will be teachable. Man, sometimes that's the problem. We don't want nobody to tell us nothing. Why? Because I'm grown. Or, 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 or worse yet, not that I'm grown, but you, you younger than me. You can't tell me nothing. You can't teach me nothing. You know what? I learned stuff from my grandkids. I learned stuff from my children. Sometimes I even get to pull them on them. I say, okay, I need, I, need you to, I need to have a meeting with you. I need you to speak and give me some, some revelation about something. But more importantly, my ears are open to God. And I'm yielded. And I'm submitted to God. And so, if you have been unavailable, unteachable, ah, if you've been unfaithful, Anybody in here been unfaithful? You know, when you're married and you're unavailable, you don't communicate. You don't listen. And you don't give no loving. Have you been unavailable to the Lord? He's saying, but I love you. He's saying, if you, if you just walk this way, I got a blessing for you. And you just keep turning your head. You know, you're sleeping in a, in a twin bed, but there's still a gulf between you. Two people in the twin bed, and you got a, you got a space. You don't touch one another. You ever, you ever experienced that? God forbid you got a big bed. You're on the other side of the world. But I say to you today, if you're ready to walk in this new dimension, if you're ready to say, God, have your way, I don't care if you think you've been firing on all cylinders, but God is calling you up higher. If that's you, come to the altar. <coughs> My life is being transformed. My life is being transformed. God is doing something in me. Adriana, your life will never, ever be the same. He loves you. 
and he knows you. he senses your love for him is growing it's bubbling over rest keep walking you keep trying to stop to see if they're following no god says just keep walking after a while, they're going to say, he's getting out of distance. I've got to run to catch up. It's okay, let him run. Because God says, you're on an assignment. You're on an assignment. Hallelujah. And if I can pray for you, let God have his way. Right now in the name of Jesus. Have your way, God. Have your way, God. In the name of Jesus. Lord, have your way. Now I just want you to stretch your hands to heaven. See, many of you are here at the altar, but let me tell you something. The Lord is working on me. He's bringing me back to that place. And he says, I'm making old things new. I'm taking the old and I'm giving it to God so he can renew it. But some people are just holding on to the old. And God says, I'm shifting the dynamic. I want you to walk in the newness. Walk in the newness. Walk in the blessing. Have your way, God. Have your way, God. Now, what I want you to do, if you know there are areas that you've been unfaithful, take a moment and acknowledge them before the Lord. Because guess what? Sometimes we can't correct what we don't acknowledge. So whatever it is, acknowledge it before the Lord. If there are moments that you know you have been unavailable to God, repent. You know God was saying do this. You know God said do that. And you decided to do it your way. Or God said get up and pray. And you just rolled over and snored. You got up and you went to the bathroom. And you just rushed back to bed. Or yet. God was trying to teach you something. And you was like I don't need to be taught. I don't want to be taught. I'm going to do it my way. Repent. 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 And make up your mind right now. That you're going to be faithful to God. Are you going to be faithful in your living? Are you going to be faithful in your giving? You're going to give your life? You're going to give your time? You're going to give your resources? Or are you going to say two out of three ain't bad? No, God says give it all. You're going to be available when God says draw close to me. You're going to be teachable? See, it'd been easy for me to just say, you know, tell you about it, but I had to tell you what happened to me this morning. Because God wants it to work in you. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, Lord, I just pray for those who are online. I pray for those who are here today. I pray for our children, and I pray, God, that you would minister to their souls, that you would be glorified in every dimension of their lives, Heavenly Father. Lord, make them faithful, available, and teachable. Right now in the name of Jesus, cause them to walk in the power.
God, if they don't know, cause them to submit to your power. Cause them to submit because, God, this is a world that is looking for power. And they're afraid that we're running out of power. But, God, we have a renewable source of power. It's the sun, the S-O-N. All we have to do is let the sun shine down on us. Lord, have your way. It will never run dry. A cloud will not shut down your production. A cloud will increase your production. If you submit to the king, let him have his way. In Jesus' name, have your way. We praise you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, we pray. And the church said, give the Lord a hand praise. Now walk in his power because this is that. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Give it up, give it up, give it up. And when you feel the need, you know, you have this half power in your hand and you feel the need to put it on your hip to locate that button, recognize that there's power if you just submit to God. In Jesus' name we pray. Be blessed, family. We'll see you next time.